So when I speak about David Goggins, I can't speak about David Goggins in a way that's just calm and cool. Because when I wake up, I know the journey that it takes for me to find my greatness. And it's hard. Every, nothing is easy. Nothing just like, oh, I wake up and I just do this or I do that. Or it just, you know, I watch people every day go through life and it's so easy. For me to be where I'm at today, it takes every bit of me. So when I speak about it, and as I get going here, you'll start seeing me, the temple will rise. The passion will come out because I'm back there. I'm doing what I do every day to become a human being. And so nothing is easy. Like running is running. It sucks, but you have a choice to make. Do you want to sit down and go back to that guy you once were? No. So this is what it takes. This is it, it takes that misunderstanding of people and they'll never get it because they were never David Goggins. So that is what it takes for me to do what I do. It may take you something differently. So for me, everything has to be in the study. Everything has to be into this. Everything has to be in everywhere I am. It has to be there. Me, focused where I am. That's why you're my second podcast I've done since Rogan, since the book came out. I don't have time for that. Shit. Because if I want to be great, I'm not trying to maximize money or maximize people knowing me. I do these things because maybe someone out there will understand me and get it and say, I can grow from this guy. And others just won't. The biggest misunderstanding about David Goggins of all time, it's like, whether you believe in God or not, I do. He put this lab rat, which is me, on this planet and said, let me fucking see what a beat up, abused kid who has, who can barely learn, barely learn, who has a twisted body, messed up, messed up genetics, sickle cell, this and that. Let me give him everything that pretty much disqualifies you from the military. But back then, it wasn't as strict. And, and let's put him in this and see what comes out of it. So to do that, friction. You don't wake up in the morning time and go to the coffee maker. Matter of fact, sometimes you don't even sleep. What it requires is when I'm at two o'clock in the, it's two o'clock in the morning and my brain is thinking about a fucking drug. And I got to get up and look in my book to see if that drug is, the, how I remember it. And this is every day of my fucking life. That's why when I train a fighter or I train someone, I'm like, you have no fucking idea how great you really are. Because you are using such minimal, minimal of what you have. And if people can learn to focus, this is what's possible. While it may not be pretty, like people want to do a documentary on me. I go, no. I don't want you to do a documentary on me because I will have normal everyday people picking me apart on oh, his life is miserable. Who wants to live like that? He looks, it's crazy how he's, it's almost like he's sick, he's psychotic. The most frustrating thing in the world for me is when normal people judge a man like myself on what it really takes to extract greatness from nothing. It takes every bit of who you are if you choose that route. If you don't, Merry Christmas, do what you gotta do. But yeah, all these things for me, like, like I told you, man, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I didn't, I'm not coming here to talk about like, you know, perform without purpose. Cause I go through, when I write these books, I go through, I try to dumb down David Goggins. How can I give normal people, and I'm normal, but I found something that most don't want to find. How can I speak to people and give them something from this crazy psychotic brain that I've developed? How can I give them that? So I sit down with Jennifer for years and write down, perform without purpose, callous your mind, armor your mind, the cookie jar, the accountability mirror, shit that people can, can use in their lives. No. I'm glad it helps you, but the barbaric life that I live, that you have to live, the almost obsession that you must have to be great, you can't put that shit in the fucking book, bro. You can't put it in the book. You can't. You can't write about it. It has to be experienced. And you can't even, after you experience it, to write it in the book, it would seem like he needs to be locked. It's, it's too gory, it doesn't make sense for a guy that everything, every second of the day, he is 
trying to extract more from something. He's constantly thinking, he's constantly, constantly disciplined, never going off the path. Whatever is injured on him, he figures a way. It's a conqueror's mindset. And very few people, if any, can really understand what that is. Like, a, a, I'm almost 50, and I've been this way for almost 30 years. Like, what do you do for fun? You, you never, I, 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 these questions, I don't, I don't get them. I don't understand them. I don't, so yeah, our culture has become hooked on the quick fix, the life hack, efficiency. Everyone is on the hunt for that simple action algorithm that nets maximum profit with the least amount of effort. There's no denying this attitude may get you some of the trappings of success if you're lucky, but it will not lead to a calloused mind or self-mastery. If you want to master the mind and remove your governor, you'll have to become addicted to hard work because passion and obsession, even talent, are only useful tools if you have the work ethic to back them up. My work ethic is the single most important factor in all of my accomplishments. Everything else is secondary. And when it comes to hard work, whether in the gym or on the job, the 40% rule applies. To me, a 40-hour work week is a 40% effort. It may be satisfactory, but that's another word for mediocrity. Don't settle for a 40-hour work week. There are 168 hours in a week. That means you have the hours to put in that extra time at work without skimping on your exercise. It means streamlining your nutrition, spending quality time with your wife and kids. It means scheduling your life like you're on a 24-hour mission every single day. The number one excuse I hear from people as to why they don't work out as much as they want to is that they don't have time. Look, we all have work obligations. None of us want to lose sleep and you'll need time with the family or they'll trip the fuck out. I get it. And if that's your situation, you must win the morning. When I was full time with the SEALs, I maximized the dark hours before dawn. When my wife was sleeping, I would bang out a six to 10 mile run. My gear was all laid out the night before. My lunch was packed and my work clothes were in my locker at work where I'd shower before my day started at 7.30 a.m. On a typical day, I'd be out the door for my run just after 4 a.m. and back by 5.15 a.m. Since that wasn't enough for me, and because we only owned one car, I rode my bike 25 miles to work. I'd work from 7.30 a.m. to noon and eat at my desk before or after my lunch break. During the lunch hour, I'd hit the gym or do a four to six mile beach run work the afternoon shift and hop on my bike for the 25 mile ride home. By the time I was home at 7 p.m., I'd have run about 15 miles, rocked 50 miles on the bike, and put in a full day at the office. I was always home for dinner and in bed by 10 p.m., so I could do it all over again the next day. On Saturdays, I'd sleep in until 7 a.m., hit a three-hour workout, and spend the rest of the weekend with Kate. If I didn't have a race, Sundays were my active recovery days. I'd do an easy ride at a low heart rate, keeping my pulse below 110 beats per minute to stimulate healthy blood flow. Maybe you think I'm a special case or an obsessive maniac. Fine, I won't argue with you. But what about my friend Mike? He's a big time financial advisor in New York City. His job is high pressure and his workday is a hell of a lot longer than eight hours. He has a wife and two kids and he's an ultra runner. Here's how he does it. He wakes up at 4 a.m. every weekday, runs 60 to 90 minutes each morning while his family is still snoozing, rides a bike to work and back, and does a quick 30-minute treadmill run after he gets home. He goes out for longer runs on weekends, but he minimizes its impact on his family obligations. Evaluate your life in its totality. We all waste so much time doing meaningless bullshit. We burn hours on social media and watching television, which by the end of the year would add up to entire days and weeks if you tabulated time like you do your taxes you should, because if you knew the truth, you deactivate your Facebook account stat and cut your cable. When you find yourself having frivolous conversations or becoming ensnared in activities that don't better you in any way, move the f on. For years, I've lived like a monk. I don't see or spend time with a lot of people. My circle is very tight. I post on social media once or twice a week, and I never check anybody else's feeds because I don't follow anyone. That's just me. I'm not saying you need to be that unforgiving because you and I probably don't share the same goals, but I know you have goals too and room for improvement or you wouldn't be reading my book. 
and I guarantee that if you audited your schedule, you'd find time for more work and less bullshit. It's up to you to find ways to eviscerate your bullshit. How much time do you spend at the dinner table talking about nothing after the meal is done? How many calls and texts do you send for no reason at all? Look at your whole life and list your obligations and tasks. Put a timestamp on them. How many hours are required to shop, eat, and clean? How much sleep do you need? What's your commute like? Can you make it there under your own power? Block everything into windows of time. And once your day is scheduled out, you'll know how much flexibility you have to exercise on a given day and how to maximize it. Perhaps you aren't looking to get fit, but have been dreaming of starting a business of your own or have always wanted to learn a language or an instrument you're obsessed with. Fine, the same rule applies. Analyze your schedule, kill your empty habits, burn out the bullshit and see what's left. Is it one hour per day? Three, now maximize that shit. That means listing your prioritized tasks every hour of the day. You can even narrow it down to 15 minute windows. And don't forget to include backstops in your day-to-day -day schedule. Remember how I forgot to include backstops in my race plan at Ultraman? You need backstops in your day-to-day -day schedule too. If one task bleeds into overtime, make sure you know it and begin to transition into your next prioritized task straight away. Use your smartphone for productivity hacks, not clickbait. Turn on your calendar alerts, have those alarms set. If you audit your life, skip the bullshit and use backstops, you'll find time to do everything you need and wanna do. But remember that you also need rest. So schedule that in, listen to your body, Sneak in those 10 to 20 minute power naps when necessary and take one full rest day per week. If it's a rest day, truly allow your mind and body to relax. Turn your phone off, keep the computer shut down. A rest day means you should be relaxed, hanging with friends or family and eating and drinking well so you can recharge and get back at it. It's not a day to lose yourself in technology or stay hunched at your desk in the form of a damn question mark.